Since the beginning of time, man has endeavored to find his center. He has scanned the skies. He has clawed at the dirt in vain hope, dreaming of a way to find the center of an empty hole and get that spindle lined right up in there. <clears throat> but it would take a genius of literature, of art and design to finally complete this quest. It was William Blake, born in 1757, who created the first Blake coaxial indicator sometime after his birth. Over the years, it was refined into the form that we know and that the Chinese still rip off to this day. But is there a better way? I set upon my own quest to build the ultimate coaxial indicator. This time, it would be digital. It would have an app that would notify you when your hole was centered. But, alas, I knew nothing of microelectronics or how to program an app. I did not even have a suitable soldering iron. So, what was I to do? I gave up. It was at this point, trolling through the Practical Machinist website to drown my sorrows with the other great inventors. And it was there that I found a small comment, a tiny tidbit of information from the mind of William Todd. The following is the result of that fortuitous event. Cannot mention this enough. This is not my design. This is Bill Todd's design. He was gracious enough to share the plans with the internet, with me, with you, with uh, anyone who wants them. So let's take a close look at each part, talk about what they do, and put it together. So first off, you got the shaft. You have a bearing on here that is press fit on. This is the rocker. The rocker goes on to the shaft, pin goes in like so. This is a, a test pin so I can get it in and out. Uh, I will make this a press fit on one side so that it is, doesn't just fly out. As it is, it's a little, it, it comes out fairly easily. That's just so I can take it in and out to do some test fitting. Of course, I say that, I can't get it out. Of course, you need to do this in order. Shaft goes in the body. Notice there's a recess for the for the bearing. I forgot a part. I hadn't showed this part yet because I'm not happy with it. You need some sort of spring. The recommended spring was a one millimeter stainless steel spring. And I couldn't find anything this size, in other words, so that it fits on the outside of the bearing. This is the smallest I found and it's two millimeter. So you notice how small that link is. That's just a little bit of spring steel, basically. What I thought about possibly doing is making a cover for this bearing so that I can run a smaller spring on it or a wave washer. Uh, I just haven't looked into that yet about doing that. I've been trying to get this thing to run smoothly and properly and uh, it takes a little work but it gets it's gotten there so spring goes in just like that just provides a little bit of tension on the shaft to 
pressure shaft, put the rocker in. Need three hands to do this. Now, you have this tiny little piece right here. This little wedge piece. That goes down into the hole there. You see the shaft in there? The 45 on the shaft. So we'll carefully drop that in there, like so. Make sure it's moving properly. Okay, we got our set screw in right here. Put our indicator in, back set screw off a little bit, till the bottom's out, and then back off about a hundred. Somewhere in there. Of course you can fiddle with it and get the dial exactly straight up and down. The last thing is the probe. Just goes on like that. Put our screw in. And there we are. Find our 10 millimeter socket and we are off to the races. Casting aluminum here. Melting this down. And then we're gonna cast it back up to the part we want. All right, so here's my test setup. I've got a motorcycle cylinder. It looks like a chainsaw cylinder. You can see how big it is. It's not very big. It's only 50 cc, but it is a motorcycle cylinder. It's cast iron, and we're going to try to find the center of it, of the bore. So what you'll see here is it'll free spin if you just let it. Now you can either hold it or you can put something. Jesus. So you either need to hold it by hand or have some mechanical way of holding it. What I've done is on the back here on the lug, I've got this handy little doodad that I just found in my toolbox and it just fits in there like so. And then I've got one of these little indicator holder, old style indicator holder, and I'll just move it up and use it to block right there like that. That way now when it spins it's got to stop there. Let's talk about needle movement. You will notice that I have approximately a thousand, maybe a thousand and a half of needle movement right now. And that's in the tool. So for my purposes, I was shooting for no more than two thousandths run out. I think that that was a good goal to try to meet for, for me making this tool on this machine, and we've got that. However, what that does cause is when a tool is spinning, like now, there is a little bit of flutter in the needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the probe over. I've kind of got it preset about the width of this of the cylinder bore a little bit more than the width of the cylinder bore and I'm just going to move it over until my bore is roughly center under the probe so I need to move it over So through the magic of video, you know, I've already sort of preset this a little bit just to make this a little quicker. But it takes a little bit of trial and error to get it right. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be actually. And I'm going to bring the probe down just to the edge. I'll make a little bit of adjustment. 
get the ball a little bit farther out. Just going to loosen it like so. And I'll come over and move the ball out a little bit. So now I have about a little more than half of the ball overhanging the, the cylinder there. That'll give me enough room to preload. Come back in. Hold that, tighten it down, preload it a little bit, and set it down in the bore, like so. I'm going to bury it below the ridge ring of this cylinder, so I don't want the ridge ring to interrupt our readings. I'm going to turn it by hand to make sure I don't have any crashes. It looks like we're going to be pretty close as it is. That little ticking you hear is just the, uh, the little holder device up here. I've put my machine on the lowest setting it will go, which is 375 RPM. Now, a cool thing you notice here is that even though this is a small cylinder, my headroom here is very short. Essentially from where the spindle bottoms out, to the deck of the cylinder is about maybe seven inches. Even if I put a Blake indicator all the way up, I'd still have very little room for the probe to go in. So I know you've all been waiting for this. Well, I've been waiting for it. I hope you've been waiting for it. I'm going to turn the machine on now and hopefully there's no crashes and hopefully the needle will flutter a little bit and we'll try to center it up. The needle's fluttering, I'm getting about you know, seven thousandths maybe. So we make an adjustment on the on the Z here, on the lead screw. See if I can get that to slow down a little bit. Okay, that made it worse. Come back a little bit. coming, keep coming, pretty close there, let's try the uh, X, see that's definitely worse, make it better, a little better, a little better, a little better, we're right in there right now. We're really close. And obviously you can keep playing with it and playing with it and playing with it. So a couple things to mention after uh, running it. First off is, I don't know if I mentioned before, but the, the Blake indicator has uh, a quarter inch of travel. In other words, it moves in this direction or this direction, a quarter inch, or uh, what is that, six and a half millimeters, a little less than that. This design has approximately a hundred thousandths. Um, it could have a little bit more depending on how you, what kind of spring you're using here, but um, you can see it goes about, uh, it's maybe a hundred, almost a hundred and twenty thousandths, which is, um, you know, two, 2.75 millimeters, maybe, maybe almost three. So a little bit difference there. Now what does that what does that mean? It just means you, you need to get closer in your initial setup. I have to say that the design is wonderful. Um, the only problems I've had with it are my own issues, um, just changing some dimensions and stuff. So in the description there's a link to the designs and um, I want to take this opportunity again to give uh, uh, Bill Todd a, a big thank you. Um, he was very helpful he emailed with me, he commented on my videos, and um, I think he was kind of as, just as excited uh, to see somebody making it as I was to make it, and uh, I do appreciate him uh, providing those plans to anybody that wants to, wants to try one of these. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty handy tool. 
I, I can see a lot of uses. You know, you don't have to just use it on inside um, diameters. You can use it on outside diameters. You can center a a a punch mark if you want to to find a, a center. So, a lot of uses for one of these. Still need to do some fine tuning on this, but um, essentially it is done. I will have one more video coming out making the probe holder. I did have some some technical difficulties making the probe holder. I've made this sort of um, squeeze collet, whatever you want to call it, thing before and um, it wasn't very successful. This time it's successful but I don't like it. Um, so look forward to that and uh, also uh, once I get it tuned up exactly how I want it, once I figure out what I'm going to do about the spring, either a wave spring or if I find some, some um, thinner spring stock one millimeter or thinner and if anybody knows any place to get that please let me know um, I've looked all around and I can't find any that is 22 millimeters in diameter oh would you look there there's my microelectronic soldering iron I did have one after all so in all seriousness I want to big, give a big thanks to Shadow Dog 500, to uh, Stefan, God of Winter, to uh, Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop, and uh, to uh, Tommy Ray Gun Machining, Tommy Tommy Gun Machining, Tommy Tommy Gun, Tommy Ray Gun. I like Ray Gun. If my name was Ray, it'd be Ray Gun Machining. Anyway. A big thanks uh, to them for for judging or hosting the the uh, event here. I'm going to put links in the description to all of them. Also links to the previous videos. There's going to be six videos all together on this build. Um, the last video will be the probe build, and I'll probably release it a couple days after this video. I encourage you to go look at Emma's lit playlist of uh, entrants this year. There's a, a lot of great videos out there, a lot of great tools. And uh, as I always say on my channel, I'll see you next time. Bye.